this is going to be a general reading for the collective. It is not a love reading, but if love comes out, we'll take it, y'all. How's everybody doing? So, it's October and spooky month. So, I'm going to be using these all month. I don't care about it. I love them. <laughs> I'm a little tired, y'all. I had a long motherfucking day. Ugh. And here I am already cussing off the bat. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell it again. I had a really long day, y'all. I had a funeral to go to. I'm exhausted. But I'm here. I'm here with y'all. I'm here with y'all. That's all that counts, right? That's all that matters. So, um, I had to attend the funeral today of... Um, my boss that I don't know if for those of you who've been following me for a while um, I was working at a flower shop in Lansing and my boss um, was fighting cancer there and he recently passed away um, over the weekend and so you know the flower shop um, was temporarily closed and everyone there lost their jobs. And it was just, you know, a tower moment for a lot of us. Um, we were really close. We were like family. So to be losing him, you know, our boss, and then to be um, in a position where, you know, we all lost our jobs. It was just a, it was a lot. But today I, you know, I, I did all the shadow work that came with that. And, um, you know, I attended his funeral today. Um, me and my kids went and it was a little tough. But I'm glad that I went and paid my respects and, you know, got to meet his beautiful family. And I'm not going to say the name because I want to give due respect to the family. I will just say that, um, you know, he was, he was very loved in our community. And he will be missed so much. But because of that, you know, it was surrounded by a lot of energy of grief and it does exhaust you. And I'm an empath. So... <laughs> When you're around all of that, you know, the energy of grief, it can be tough to, you know, protect your energy. So I'm here. We're here. We're going to do a reading because I felt the pull. I was chilling in my robe. I was relaxed. And spirit was like, we're working today. And I was like, are we? I'm tired. I'm in my robe. I'm all cozy. I'm in my pajamas. Like, I'm in my pajamas. Look, let me show you. Okay. Let me see. I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> spirit was like, we're working. Oh, it's three. Hold on. It's 3.30 on my phone. I got to, let me see. Three. I got to turn off my notifications so people don't try to get a hold of me. All right, so we're going to start out with the Light Sears Tarot. All right, so what do we need to know? So like I said, this is a general reading. It's not a love reading, but if love comes out, we're going to definitely take it there. Um, it's been a really long time since I've done just like a regular general reading, right? So I just felt guided to do so. So, you know, who knows what can come out? There's There's a lot of stuff that can come out. Um, but it's timeless, so whenever you find it, it's for you. We are, however, in October. There's a lot of eclipse energies and all sorts of crazy astrological shiz going on. I will not pretend like I know what's going on in the astro because I am not an astrological person. Like, I'm a tarot reader. I'm an energy reader. Um, <clears throat> I read the energy of the cards and of the room. And of people, like, very well. But, however, I do not know what the heck is going on in the cosmos. So, I will not pretend to. I just, I'm going to roll with it. I know the energies are wild right now. So, everything feels crazy. 
All right, Ten of Wands. Oof, we itching to do some traveling. Traveling. I, I am. I don't know about y'all. It's funny because I just got done traveling. I had to travel to Lansing from where I'm staying now to go to this funeral. And I ended up running into, like, someone that I hadn't seen in years and he's like a cousin of one of my ex-boyfriends. So that was really strange. <laughs> really strange. Um, and it was it was totally like a, a kismet meeting too. Because like I went to take my child to the, the one gas station to use the bathroom. And that one was closed. So we had to go to the store next door and use that one. And he just happened to be there. And it was really weird. Because I was like... If that other bathroom would have been open, we wouldn't have went over to that store and ran into him. So it was one of those moments like, okay, we're meant to have this meeting for some reason or another. Why are we here? So let's talk about it. You know, so it was like, hey, I was meant to see you here. I don't know why, but let's chat it up and let's see what's going on in your life. And you know what I'm saying? It was one of those weird moments. Um, anyways, I don't know. I don't know why I brought that up. It was just weird. It's just one of those things where, like, you know the universe, like, orchestrated it. And you're like, okay, why are we here? What are we doing? What do we need to learn from each other, right? All right, so we have Ten of Wands and we have Seven of Wands. So, and I'm not quite sure where we're going with this yet, but there's a lot of wands. <laughs> a lot of energy flowing. Like I said, a lot of weird astrological shiz going on. A lot of energy flowing. Some of you feel like you really want to get up and move and do things, but you have a lot going on and you're feeling the need to like defend yourself and what you're doing in your life. Don't do that. There's no need to defend yourself. You don't have to do that because if people don't understand what you're doing, it's not for them to understand. It's for you to understand. It's not for them. It's for you, right? So if you... Feel the need to not do anything because you have a lot going on. Don't feel the need to defend yourself there either. Just do what you're doing. Just focus on you. All right. There's a need to be patient right now and to balance out your energies because these energies are going to be kicking our ass. <laughs> like really, really soon. They're just going to be, we're going to feel it. I'm feeling it already. If you're empathic, you're probably feeling it already. You're probably feeling tired. You're probably feeling spent. Like, I didn't even want to work today. I was like, I'm not working. And Spirit was like, girl, you better get your butt up. And I was like, do I have to? And they were like, are you a divine channel for source? And I was like, you know I am. And they were like, then you better get your ass up. And I was like, fine. I'm doing it. So here I am, y'all. So you better smash that damn like button. <laughs> and you better comment too. Because a bitch is tired. I don't want to be channeling right now. <laughs> so some of y'all are going to be feeling that too. Look at this. I was just saying that. So the need to rest and recoup. See, y'all need to rest and recoup. Spirit is not letting me rest and recoup because I have to bring the messages for you. <laughs> uh, I don't get that luxury right now, right? But... I make sure that I take really good care of myself when I'm not working. So all of these energies are, there's a huge upheaval. I keep getting this card like a million times, a million trillion times. It's ridiculous. It's seriously ridiculous. Like probably I would say, I, I do card readings, personal readings for myself every single day to see what the energy is like. And I would say probably for the past week, I've gotten this card from multiple decks, right? Oracle, Oracle decks, tarot decks. It doesn't matter. I get this. Rebirth, 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 death, transition, transition, um, or not transition, transformation, transformation. It keeps coming up for me. And so the collective is really shifting into this energy of like a huge transformational shift everyone is sort of going into the direction of their higher purpose right their higher 
myself energy, okay? It's not just me. It's everyone. Because it came out for us. Look, death, rebirth, okay? So that's why we're finding the need to rest, right? We have four of cups. So there's this feeling of like, it's funny because there's this feeling of like everybody being sort of like, feeling like there's no movement. It's like boring and stagnation, right? It feels like there's no movement, but it's insane because the movement is all around us. It's just about where your focus is, okay? So while you're spending all this time resting, what you don't realize is while you're resting, the energy around you is shifting like crazy. It's cr it's crazy shifting fast. So before you know it, it's like you're going to open your eyes. You're going to be in a whole different, complete timeline, right? I was watching this YouTube video from this really great guy and I, I think I posted it on my community tab where the man was talking about um, how, you know, society will try to convince us that we are staring at a floor and, you you know, it's just one floor and we're staring at, you know, one direction of the floor and the other direction of the floor, right? And, you know, then you see an elevator and you get on the elevator and you're like, oh, there's other floors, right? I didn't even notice that there were other floors. So then you get in the elevator and you're going on the, on, you're going up or you're going down depending on wherever you're going, all right? And you're like, oh, I'm going to go check out the other floors, right? So society will try to say, no, like stay on this floor. Like this is your floor. Like you're, you're on this floor. You are a floor. And you're like, no, but I want to explore the other floors. And they're like, no, but the other floors aren't safe. Like, you need to stay here, right? And so the daring ones will be like, I'm going to check out the other floors. I don't really care what society says. I'm going. And then we start taking the floor up, you know, going to the next floor. And then we get out and we explore that floor. And we're like, oh, this is really, really cool. Wow. And then you're like, wow, so I want to see the other floors. But then this whole entire time that you're experiencing this, what you're not realizing is that you're not the floors. You're the elevator. So just let that sink in. We're not the floors. We're the elevator. So we are the energy that is shifting between the floors and the floors are our timelines. And I thought that was absolutely incredible. And it just explained so well this energy that we are going through, this shifting all the time, consistently things are always shifting and we're not the floors and we're not the timeline. We are the energy that's propelling that timeline and that's why we don't stay in one place for too long because we're constantly shifting. And while we're sitting here resting thinking nothing's happening, I'm so bored, this is stupid, I'm just in this loop of like the same bullshit Bam, before you know it, we open our eyes, we're on a different floor, we're on a different timeline, and then we realize we're, you know, we're never even shifting floors. We've been the, the freaking shift this whole entire time. Power has been within us. It's incredible, you guys. And now I know why Spirit wanted this damn message to come out. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so... Some of you are working really, really, really hard as I am to like achieve whatever it is, you know, your dreams, whatever your dreams are, you know, you're perfecting your craft. This is about perfecting what it is that you do, becoming the master of it. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, if you find something that you love, put your whole heart into it and go for it, honestly, because if you don't like. You know, you have to give yourself purpose. And, you know, this is my purpose. This is what I love to do. I love to do tarot. So no matter what I'm doing in my life, no matter where life takes me, I'm forever going to be doing tarot. It doesn't matter. This is the one constant in my life that, you know, will always have a part of my heart. I will always be a channeler, a seer, the oracle. So no matter what timeline I'm on, I will be doing tarot. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else we need to know. And yes, I love doing this because I am mastering and perfecting my craft. That is absolutely what I'm doing for sure. I've been reading tarot since I was 15 years old. Page of Swords. So some of you are learning new things. 
you know, um, y'all are studying and perfecting your craft, but in different ways of learning. Wow, two of swords. So there's something that there's something that we've been wrestling with. Um, that you're going to have to come to a decision about, right? There's something you've been wrestling with. There's something you're not seeing as well. The blindfold represents something not being seen. You're not going to be able to see this time. You're going to have to follow your heart to make this decision at whatever crossroad you're at, okay? The reason you haven't made a decision is because you're afraid it's going to lead to heartbreak. That's what it is. But you have to realize that if you're not making a decision is what's going to break your heart. Was that? All right, sorry about that. Something is definitely not being seen. We have a lot of threes here. We have the three of swords and the three of cups. So you're sitting here in your head thinking it's going to lead to heartbreak. And instead, it's going to lead to celebrations. You just have to trust yourself. You have to trust your gut. You have to trust your gut, right? We have two of pentacles. So whatever it is that you've been waiting on and trying to juggle... It's going to balance out, okay? I feel like you've been waiting on something or someone. Don't allow yourself to put any part of your life on hold for anyone. If you're waiting on something, I would say do other things while you're waiting, okay? And don't ever, 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 ever put your life on hold for another uh, a person, ever. Like, don't ever do that. We have the Hierophant. Wow. Why do we have the Hierophant here? Star. Some of you, if you've been waiting on a commitment and hoping for a commitment from someone, that's coming in. Uh, we have strength. So it could be possibly with the Leo. We have um, strength, which is the Leo card. Let's get one more card, please. Woo. See, we have eight of swords. So some of you are just really, really trapped in your own thoughts, okay? There's so much good energy here. You're balancing out a lot of your energy. Um, and yet there's this energy of like getting trapped in your own thoughts. So let me just say something here. So you kind of teeter-totter between like, hoping for the best and being really positive and affirming things, right? You teeter between like being super duper optimistic about things and then sort of going the opposite direction. Like you get in your own mind and then you're like, well, things never work out for me. And so it's just going to end up the same way. But at the same time, it's like you're doing all these positive affirmations, you're meditating, you're doing all these right things, and you're focusing on what you want to happen, which is good things. But the, I feel like the minute that something goes wrong, all of a sudden you're back in this dark place where you're like, but, you know, all my relationships end up like this, or I always end up broke, or I always end up, 
you know, things don't work out for me, blah, blah, blah. And that's what's creating this barrier to your success. The universe is wanting to gift you, gift you all these good things. Look, we have the Hierophants, um, which is like a commitment in a, in a relationship. We have you balancing out your energy. We have the star, which represents you're heading in the wrong, in the wrong, heading in the right direction. It's just you're making things go wrong because you're focusing on what could possibly go wrong. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh, Lord. And you need to focus on what could go right. Okay. Okay, so we're going to draw a few cards from the Manara deck. I don't know why. I just saw a guide to you. This is like a sexual oracle deck, so I'm going to cover up any of the sexual stuff if anything comes up, okay? So we have the naked self. So some of you are, it's number 23, which is number five. There's been a huge shift in the collective right now of like, People learning to be more vulnerable and learning to expose the deepest aspects of themselves. And I'm going to put this behind the bunny and hope that nothing shows. Oh, good. It doesn't. Okay. The ears are covering it. So when we learn to expose our deepest selves, then, you know, we can go deeper into intimacy, Right. And so this is a really positive change for everyone right now in the collective. And if you're watching this, yes, this is you included. Like you may feel very naked and vulnerable when you start to expose your beautiful heart, but you're meant to feel like that because it's very scary to be vulnerable and, and, you know, expose yourself. Like it's like feeling naked basically. So all of this is leading to like something greater than yourself, which is this instinctual bliss, right? It's just being in bliss. It's like when you're naked and exposed, like, you know, and I'm not saying like literally for some of you, it might be literally, but I'm speaking figuratively here. It's like one, when you are, let me make sure that's not showing anything. Okay. It's not. So when you are your authentic, naked, vulnerable self, and you expose all the delicate parts of your heart and all the things that you think might not be accepted and loved, then you can relax and you can be yourself knowing that those that accept you and loved you, love you are not going to care. They're going to accept you and love you no matter what. Then you, then you can be yourself and not feel like you have to be anything else other than who you are. It's such a strain on our body to sit there and pretend to be something that we're not. You can show all aspects of yourself and those that love you will stay and the, those that don't will kick them in the butt as they leave out the door, right? There's just something so freeing about being able to be yourself and not worry about what other people think about you, right? All right. So in the past, you had a way of protecting your feelings and those are no, that's, you're no longer doing that. You're learning to use discernment. There are times, yes, of course, when you have to protect yourself, like from people that don't have really good intentions, but for the most part, you are able to express yourself and allow yourself to be yourself and then only have to protect your feelings when you use discernment, right? When you can see people's intentions and they're not good. And you've learned that through spirituality. You know, it's number 15. If you add it up, it's six. So that number six represents spirituality. And in the instinctual bliss is number 26. If you add six and two, it's eight. <clears throat> so this is an eternal bliss. It's one that you can continue to cultivate forever as long as you just continue to be real to who you are. Does that make sense? You can be in bliss forever, forever. Never not feel happy and calm no matter what. As long as you just continue to be real to who you are. Of course, things are not going to be, you know, puppies and fucking rainbows every day, right? You're going to have hard days, but you can go into those knowing that you're going to be okay. 
that no matter what happens, you're going to be okay because you have inner peace and you are a warrior and you can handle anything. Okay. Once you get to that point, then you're not afraid of anything. You know that you can just alchemize everything with love. What in the fuck is going on with these cards? I swear, this is exactly why I never get monetized on YouTube because I cost like a sailor. Puma. Boom. All right, let's read it. So this is the animal spirit deck. We have the puma. Looks like there's birds in there too. Puma represents power, desire, and healing. The puma represents powerful magic. It symbolizes an awakening of energies and desires that can lead to healing and fulfillment. Didn't I just say that? You can have bliss every single day. Fulfillment, right? Just be who you are. So there's also a mandala that is around um, the puma, right? With other animals. The mandala is a mystic circular symbol that in Buddhist and Hindu traditions was used as an aid to meditation. So some of you might be using meditation more as a tool. I know recently I just got back into meditation. I haven't been meditating recently, but I've been meditating every single night now for the past week. So the psychologist Carl Jung said the mandala circumcised a holy place and was a symbol of completeness within the inner psyche. See, inner peace. You can achieve your inner peace by meditating, by focusing your energy on healing, right? And just making the decision to be happy. It says the mandala was used as a means towards greater self-awareness. He described the four points of the mandala to be like the cross threads in the telescope of our understanding. That's really powerful. It's about knowing who you are at the core of your being. What makes you tick? What makes you happy? Wow, I got this card for myself the other day in my personal reading, The Swan. The Swan represents a huge transformation, a loss of innocence and beauty. So not a loss of beauty, but a loss of innocence, and it represents beauty. Okay, so this painting of a swan maiden represents a common motif found in mythologies and folk tales of many cultures around the globe, from Native American to Slavic. The basic plot is the same. <sighs> a young man finds the feather robe or skin of a swan maiden, a goddess-like creature which she has temporarily shed her skin to assume a human form. The youth attempts to hide the feathers from the maiden which allows him to possess her and the swan finds it assumes its animal form, and leaves him. The lost swan thus symbolizes the departure of youthful innocence and the passage into maturity. And in some versions of the story, the swan will die. So it represents dying to our innocence and being woke, woke, right? Woke. <laughs> um, in Greek mythology, the swan song is a beautiful song sung by the swan just before death. So it's the song that we sing right before we... Um, wake up to our higher self right it's a transformation no longer are we um sleeping but we're shedding that we're leaving that behind and we are mature and awakened right the swan also represents a twin flame But it's about being um, intimate with yourself and knowing who you are, right? Waking up to who you are at your core. It's remembrance. We have the Huron. Oh my gosh. These two cards I got back to back last night in my personal reading I did for myself. These energies are really heavy in the collective then. So again, we have life, feminine energy, and renewal, which is another word for transformation. The Huron is a bird of the water. And is thus associated with feminine energy and regeneration, which means, you know, um, transformation, rebirth. 
In ancient Egypt, the Huron was the first transformer of the human soul after death. Because it was seen in flight over the fields when the Nile began to flood, it was also associated with fertility and the renewal of life. See, being reborn. In the Roman epic, the Aeneid, the Huron is again a symbol of renewal and is depicted rising from the ashes of the burned city of Ardea. So again, we have this energy of being born again, being reborn. There, it's a rebirth, okay? You think that all of the old things in your old life are dying, but you're actually being being reborn into your greater timeline, something that's going to serve you better than this old life. So shed that skin and allow it to be. Stop fighting it, right? And we have the bear. Look at, there's the bear. That'll be um, a confirmation. If you've been seeing bears lately, there's your confirmation that this reading is for you. All right. Um, we're going to go on to the monology deck and then we're going to be done. So there was two swans in that deck or in this picture, I think. Actually, there's three. And there's two um, Hurons here. All right. So the collective is going through a huge, huge transformational shift. It feels like a part of us is, is dying, but... We are actually being reborn into something greater that's going to fit us way better than the old life. Trust the process, guys. I always tell you that. Trust the process. Trust the process. Full moon in Virgo. Take inspired action. So when you feel the call to start moving forward, you're going to go ahead and do that, but you're going to take inspired action. You're going to follow the signs from the universe, right? You're going to follow the signs in your dreams. You're going to follow the path that spirit lays out for you. <clears throat> and then we have last quarter moon in Gemini. Clear your mind. Spirit is saying it's time to meditate. Go within. The next steps are going to be revealed, but you have to be ready. <laughs> You have to be ready. Yeah, that means you've got to do the work. You have to meditate. And you have to release your blocks. First quarter moon in Scorpio. All right? Yeah, you can release your blocks by meditating, going to a quiet space, going within, moving your body. So that is all we got. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you want to book a reading with me, click in the description box below my videos and click on the Goldie Appointment Fix. And that'll book your reading. I love you all. Bye.